In this video, you should pay careful close attention to what we go over because we're going to be talking about concentration. Now, concentration is just a way of talking about how much solute is in a solution. If we want to talk about concentration qualitatively, we could talk about a solution being dilute, in other words, with a small amount of solute, or we could talk about a solution being concentrated, which means it has a large amount of solute in the solution. But when we talk about solubility, we could also be more quantitative. In other words, we could put numbers to the concentration of the solution. When we talk about quantitative measures of concentration, we can use different kinds of units depending on what we find most important. Most measures of concentration are defined by stating how much of the solute is present in a certain amount of the solution. For example, from your earlier videos, you should be aware of the concentration unit called molarity, represented by capital letter M. Molarity is defined as the moles of the solute in a given liter of solution. So molarity has the units of moles per liter. Another concentration unit you may be familiar with is called mole fraction, which is sometimes represented by a capital letter X. Mole fraction is found by taking the moles of the solute and divided that by the sum of the moles of the solute and the moles of the solvent. Mole fraction does not have units, it's simply a number. Another kind of concentration unit is known as parts by mass. And there's actually three different concentration units that are considered parts by mass types of units. All three of these can be found by taking the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution and multiplying by some factor. It's important to remember that whatever units you use for the mass of the solute, you have to use the same mass units for the mass of the solution. The first parts by mass concentration is known as mass percent. We sometimes represent mass percent by m slash m percent. You find mass percent by taking the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution multiplying by 100. Another kind of parts by mass measure is known as parts per million, sometimes represented as ppm. Again, we take the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution, but the multiplication factor now is 1 million. The units we use for ppm are simply ppm. Occasionally, we'll be working with much smaller concentrations. The final parts by mass measure is known as parts per billion. It's represented by PPB, and we calculate it by taking the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution multiplied by 1 billion, or 1 times 10 to the 9th. Parts per million and parts per billion are often used in environmental measures of concentrations of various contaminants. One exception to the amount of solute divided by amount of solution is a concentration unit known as molality. We sometimes represent molality with a italic lowercase letter m. Molality is found by taking the moles of the solute and dividing it by the mass of the solvent in kilogram units. This is different from the other concentration units because the denominator is the solvent and not the entire solution. Molality has units of moles per kilogram. Molality is used most often if the solution is in an environment which has changing temperature. The reason for this is that when we have molarity, for example, which has a denominator of liters of solution, the volume of a solution can change as temperature changes. This would lead to the somewhat absurd result that you could change the concentration of a solution just by changing the temperature, which would change the volume. If we have a system that is changing in temperature, then we need a concentration unit that is independent of temperature. That is such a case that we would use molality. For example, within the human body, the temperature can change a little bit, 
And so very often, concentrations in the body are measured in molality rather than molarity. After watching this video, you should be able to calculate the solution concentration when given a particular information about the solute and the solvent. In some cases, you'll be given the information about the solute and the solvent, but you'll be able to infer or deduce information about the solution.